Yo, what's up guys? Different environment. I'm in the hotel right now for my work pretty much and I still wanted to record this video. This is actually kind of a late video as well. But I prepared quite a few videos throughout the week already when I was back home. And this is one of those videos that I still had to record. This is the rush or no wait, this is not the rush. This is the siege from Monday. And yeah, just we're playing Aftermath EU Legend Guild. So we're going for some good teams here. At least as most as possible. Also, you see that I'm in a hotel right now. This is for work. And I'm just going to be here until tomorrow. Well, the moment that this video is posted, I'm probably done with work. Or kind of almost done with work. So almost out of this place. And yeah, it's what it is. It's what it is. I'm pretty much going to work. And then afterwards, I'm quarantined in this hotel. Because I'm working about like 180 kilometers from, from my home. So normally, I will work remotely. But the first two weeks, I actually had to be here. So that's why I'm here. And the hotel room is messy. And I don't give a shit. Also, I can't really check a second screen here if my record is going all alright. So I'm really hoping that this goes correct in one take. And that they don't have to do any retakes. Um, could be, could be, could be. So yeah, I still love myself some Shana Martina comments. This shit is still too OP. It works against nearly anything. As long as you don't get like heavily outsped AWCC, China Martina can get away with like so much stuff. And this Triana actually hits like quite a lot of damage. Also, if this happens, this Triana is gonna solo it like all the freaking time. So yeah, easy wins, easy wins. 2 0 so far against us. Oh, I almost want to say Squad Zero, but it's Ath Matthew. I'm also, I put my microphone or my camera up there and my screen is down here. So I'm kind of not really looking into the camera, I guess. It does happen. Struggles. Also, in case you're wondering, what's this weird thing around your neck? That's, that's a headset. I'm talking to this one. Okay, whatever. Still a weird guy. But yeah, I'm just talking to that thing to, to record my mic. Or record my voice with the mic. Makes more sense. Either how. Yeah, I didn't really want to use the built-in laptop one. Because the built-in laptop one, I did my first few videos on that. Those were really shit. I do hope that this thing is a little bit better. Rip headphones. <laughs> um, I didn't really want to bring up my standalone mic. But yeah, this was still a pretty good option. And I'm not really sure about this team though. I've seen it a few times already, but... I guess it's pretty hard food to the Bulwark, but to be honest, a lot of teams are actually still food to the Bulwark. Bulwark is just OP. It's just such an OP free offense. Bulwark is one of those few units I would actually, if you really care about Siege, which I don't, then at least let's say I do care about Siege, but not enough. I would keep multiple off. And because you can actually work with uh, Bulwark without having a max skill, do really recommend to max skill him still because he can only do the I got your nose pretty good if he's max skilled, which is called countering and the stealing buffs. And within this one, we had to fight a lot of the Iris defense, so a lot of Tian Lang, Nana, Iris, that kind of good stuff. So I had to fight a few of those, and this team I would say was pretty creative actually. It was. Pretty good. I do kind of like my Lima. My Lima is pretty, pretty fun to work with. This thing kind of expected more damage, but I guess there's a lot of tanky stats on that Iris. But we have this Carcano that shoots for a little bit much. Just a little bit. Same as the Lima damage. Was that 2.5k per hit? Well, that was on speed buff. Speed buff is a little bit cheating, but that's still a lot of damage for that Lima. Lima was doing 2.4 case without. Okay, my Lima is OP, boys. That's that's apparently why this thing is working on defense. My Lima has too much additional damage artifacts. Well, I've showed you guys on stream before. I have crazy additional damage artifacts for light and also for support. So that's what's on this Lima. We have some more Iris. We have some more Nanas. And we want to let them explode. And this is one of those ways you let them explode. Missing on the middle, which is a little bit bad, but... It's not the end of the world because everything is kind of low HP already. And you just do silence and wait, you kill it, and it's a GG. Could this go wrong? Yes, it could. And actually, Shazam does a lot of damage. I'm not sure why everyone is crying about Shazam being so bad, but Shazam actually does a nice amount of damage. 
I would say. And he has armor break as one, two turns. He has speed buff. He has cleanses. He has heals. AOE counter. I was like, you're not bad. Maybe your runes are bad. Nah, I'm just believe it. I think he's decent. So we're fighting some more Nanas with some more Shazams. So this team wasn't really sure what Lala and friends was doing. It was apparently healing for quite some. But I, I legitimately wasn't really sure what, how much or what it was doing. I did have some issue here that I couldn't strip anything, which is not that great for what I have as a setup here. Because the moment that Shazam does his third skill, I kind of want to still hit stuff while getting counters and shit. So that might be a tricky part, but I was like, yeah, let's just, let's just see how it goes. Also, you do get counted and you get a armor break which is pretty strong i would say so now you kind of have to make the choice who do you hit what do you hit but in some cases it also can make you help that you get certain units on certain targets because they're armor broken so if my feng yang is actually hitting the thing that is uh armor breaking on the s1 while there's a counter on that thing i can actually make feng yang get an armor break on his ass and that thing starts to focus feng yang which is uh, a decent option. It's not the greatest. Wouldn't say this is the greatest team out there. It's if he had some good RNG, he had a lot of potential to actually kill me. I would say that heal is pretty nutty as well. That heal is actually pretty nutty. Maybe I should have focused on the middle first because that middle thing supposedly doesn't have that much HP. But if I proc once, it was uh, still a good fight, still GG, and. I would say this wasn't really the best team I was playing with today, but in the end, it still won. Could this thing have lost? Yeah, I would say so. It it, it could have lost, but a lot of teams, like if the RNG is that bad, you can always lose. Not with all teams, but with most teams. So going in once more against the Pinky team. I already killed Pinkroid, this exact team once. Killing it again. More Nanas, more Iris. So my idea behind this team was that my monkey would start stacking a lot of stacks pretty easy because there's a lot of multi-hitters. And he will easily be at max stacks pretty soon. He's already at 5 stacks and he's at 7 stacks. And this thing actually does a lot of damage. 25k HP down the drain, no armor breaks, just an attack buff. Now we're at 9 stacks. And yeah, the Fire Monkey is actually very good against those kind of teams. I'm not sure if Riley necessarily is the best middle solution in this, but I pretty much liked it. I kind of liked it because this at this time, the whole team is 100% resist. 24k damage on a Tian Lang that I presumably is pretty tanky with just an attack buff, no armor break. With an armor break, that S2 would hit up to like 40k's. 45k's maybe even. That's that's serious damage from that monkey. This monkey is pretty well ruined. I have this damage set that I just... Ruins the damage set that I just rotate around like units that I use for siege. And in case of the monkey right there, the monkey was actually having uh, less speed and... Instead of Will having revenge, so... Yeah, I do switch it around. I do have some side options to it and that kind of good stuff. So, yeah. Pretty solid set. And this Tessarion just completely removed his own protector buff. Really useful. Really, really useful. This team is also pretty nice. I kind of like this team. Sometimes I kind of overuse it. If you get CC, it is not really a great team. But in Bruiser fights, this team is pretty nice. Because you have a bit of everything. You don't have cleanses though, that's the only thing you don't have, but you have a lot of lives. A little bit too many lives. But it's nice. It's nice to have lives. And this thing does so much damage. That's it's just stupid. Why does that thing do so much damage? It's not needed. Well it's fine for me, I guess. Can't complain. Well I can always complain. I can do complain. But yeah, I don't mind. Good damage. OP team, using my own Nana. Another pretty similar team. Maybe the same. Maybe not. But this team, I wouldn't say, is necessarily really that good. It's one of those really typical, you put a um, LD5 next to a Carcano and a Triana, which was good before, but currently I wouldn't say is that good. There, there's quite a bunch of counters to it. 
And TOA Harding, this whole team is just pretty simple. But say, what if you actually got um, countered by the Leon and that kind of stuff? I can handle a hit or two by the Leon. It doesn't do too much. So I wasn't really that worrisome about that at all. And if it had no will runes, but actually anything else, you could reset the attack bar. Very easy going. And then for the final hit, some more Iris, some more Nana, and some more some more Shazam. Is this the final hit or is there one more after this? I'm not entirely sure. I think this is the final hit. And I would say Alusia 9 out of 10 is very good against Iris defense. Because you can just shut down the Iris completely. You pretty much just play a... Uh, what's it called? You play a 2v3. And it's just very simple going. Perna is also pretty nice right now because Perna self heals. And with Perna self healing, I would say Perna has quite good value. Because mo most of the time you can't really put Perna in a single... What's it called? Single healer. But with Perna, two lives you can actually. Well, in this case I don't, but Elusia is more of a CC unit, to be honest, which potentially also have heals, rather than going for the, the heals itself. Elusia is a very nice siege unit. I would rather, in current meta, create multiple Elusias than multiple Lulus, to be honest. But still, Lulu is pretty OP. But I'm not a big fan of the Lulu Tractor Windy. Also, in current meta, it's getting worse. Because the counters that are made for it, which are not these teams, are, well, you can't really use it against these teams. But in the Net Force, mainly, you see a lot of stuff that is pretty hard countering the uh, Windy Tractor kind of stuff because of, like, Kinkies, Skogols, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's my 10, 10 of that one. Pretty nice to get 10 10 against uh, Aftermath EU. Also, um, what's it called? Yeah, I actually did only hit uh, net 5s. I really prefer to only hit net 5s. For me, the net 4s is mostly where my pain shit starts, where you have to make multiple dupes of like weird non meta or non RTA units and don't really want to make those. But in net 5s, if I really focus, I can mostly get 10 10. Unless I mess up. And that also happens a lot. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Next one is going to be back home. I'll probably be streaming this Saturday. And I got some fun stuff Saturday afternoon, European time. I got some fun stuff going on. So check me out then. Guys, thanks for watching.